Yo, what up? Toshi here. I want to say thank you all for the support you've shown in the past week and a half for the recent videos. You guys have been killing it. Even though some of you be hurt my feelings, <laughs> I really do appreciate all of you. And uh, that was a sarcastic laughter. I don't appreciate those of you that be hurt my feelings. That, 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 it has me wanting to cry sometimes, I'm not going to lie. So one of the things I mention on this channel periodically, but not all the time, is characters that fundamentally change the way you play the game. And Bronya is a character that fundamentally changes the way you play Honkai Star, right? And that's thanks to her elemental skill, giving an ally an additional turn. This is one of the strongest mechanics in the game, because as you all know, Honkai Star is centered around taking turns, because it is a turn-based game. So whenever you're giving an ally a free turn, this is going to change the tide of the battle and change the way you play the game. So all because of that elemental skill, Bronya has remained top tier, because no other character in the game can do exactly what she does. It is so powerful. It is the strongest mechanic that we have right now, alongside Silverwolf. And speaking of Silverwolf, she is another character that fundamentally changes the way you play the game. Funny enough, why Bronya and Silverwolf are regarded as the two strongest characters in the game, because of all the value they provide, and as I said before, how they fundamentally change the way you play the game. And that's thanks to Silverwolf's weakness in plant mechanic. Now, we call it Bronya Bias at this point, because these are the only two characters that have super strong mechanics in their kit that, you know, like I said, changes the way you play Honkai Star Rail. You put a weakness on the enemy that the enemy didn't already otherwise have, and therefore you're able to break that enemy's weakness with that weakness you implanted on that enemy. So if you have a team of fire and the enemy doesn't have fire, you can inflict that weakness of fire on the enemy. You deal more damage because the enemy has lower resistances, right? And they don't take as much damage as before because you know they had no fire weakness so they took less damage but now they take even more because they have that weakness and then you break them for the fire break effect that's so strong so ever since the release of silver wolf i've been playing this game differently from the average person i've never had to worry about who i bring in the team comp with her because she's always going to apply that element of one of my allies to the enemy allowing me to bring whoever i want in my party because this character exists so if you don't have a character like Bronya, you play the game much more differently than someone else. Because that's because Bronya has a unique playstyle and mechanics that shapes Honkai Star into a different game and a different reality for those of you that do have this character. And for those of you that do have Silver Wolf, you play the game much more differently than those people that don't. And the reason being is because you're able to bring anyone on your account in a party with Silver Wolf into a fight because that enemy will have that weakness Silver Wolf puts on them allowing your characters to do maximum damage. That's insane. So with Honkai Star being a game centered around weakness breaking the enemy, because this is one of the ways the game is intended to be played, you bring the element the enemy is weak to, and you're able to break that weakness the enemy has, and then you deal additional effects, whether that is delaying the enemy's action and reducing their speed, whether that is applying a wind damage over time, a lightning damage over time, whether that's freezing the enemy, making them delay their action once they do take their turn, and freezing them so they don't do any counterattacks or use any abilities. These are all very strong and they allow you to essentially play the game in a different manner because this essentially makes it to where you don't have to really rely on raw stats from your characters because the weakness break can sometimes carry the fight for you. And funny enough, when you put the two strongest characters in the same team, that fundamentally changes the way you play the game. You essentially have a team that allows you to brute force any content in the game. Even though Silver Wolf is a single target damage dealer, her debuffs are single target, she still allows you to put that single weakness on the enemy and most times it's going to be a boss enemy that you're looking to maximize her debuffs on anyways. And then Bronya is very good for any damage dealer because that additional turn means your damage dealer is going to do more damage, get more energy from taking the turn, and they're just going to maximize the buffs she provides. It's very good that this character is able to work with any damage dealer in the game. So if you're a damage dealer and you're able to use the Bronyas, you have a significant advantage over those that are not able to use these two characters. Funny enough, Seal is another character that fundamentally changes the way you play the game, and the reason being is because she gets an additional turn whenever she kills the enemy. But the reason why I don't classify her in the same tier as Bronya and Silver Wolf is because this character just does damage. She doesn't give any buffs to the team, she doesn't apply any debuffs. So therefore, if you have a damage dealer that is just going to kill all of those enemies at the same time, then what's the point of a character like this being in your team comps anyways? So while Resurgence is one of the strongest mechanics in the game, Bronya gives Resurgence to any of your allies. And the fact of the matter is, since Seal's damage increases by 88%, you get that from Bronya using her elemental skill on an ally. So that really doesn't make her more unique than Bronya, honestly. 
But again, I really do love this character. She is my favorite damage dealer. So if you noticed, all the things I brought up in terms of changing the way you play Honkai Star based on different characters, well, that's gated around the rules that the game actually gives to every single character. So every character in this game has to follow those rules. But these characters ignore the rules because they force their mechanics onto the gameplay. Now, when we talk about stuff like that, there is one last thing that we have to mention because this is a mechanic that no other character as of right now has been able to bypass or the rules of that mechanic. Skill point management has been one of the most important factors when it comes to building your teams in Honkai Stereo. You want a team of characters that flow really well together and one of the ways of making sure that they flow together is based on the skill point management of the team. If you have a healer that is not a skill point detriment to the team such as Luocha who is a skill point positive character that can give skill points to the team then he is very flexible and you're able to put him in any single team you decide to use with him. If you have a damage dealer like QQ that eats up all of your skill points, then you have to pair her with characters like Luocha that does not eat any of the skill points that she has to use. Because otherwise, if you put these two characters together, let's say QQ and a character like in the future, Huo Huo, there will be times where you're stuck having to use less skill points on this character, and that is a net DPS loss for her. And that playstyle has been solidified by the release of Daniel. He's a character that has to use three skill points every time he takes his turn to maximize his damage. If he does not have those three skill points on his turn, he doesn't have two stacks from his ultimate. You're going to lose a lot of damage on the character. You have damage dealers like Clara that are extremely flexible because she doesn't eat any skill points. And that is if you play her as a sub DPS or a tank hybrid character. You put her in a team with a skill point hungry damage dealer, she can act as an additional damage dealer in that team comp but also a character that strays or takes away the aggro from that ally, making sure she takes a hits and counterattacking doing much more damage to the enemy. Now funny enough, the most greedy character when it comes to skill points is able to recover a skill point after using the enhanced basic attack. This is a very rare mechanic and going forward this is going to matter when it comes to other characters that are also able to provide skill points for the team, which is something that is going to fundamentally change the way you play Honkai Star Rail. Because what if we come to the point where we have a character of the harmony category that is able to provide skill points to the team to where you can use the two most greedy skill point hungry characters in the game. Because before you're not able to use these two characters together because they both need to use skill points. And well, if there has not been a skill point generator for these two to function together, then you're not able to use them. That is unless you want to suffer. However, with the release of Hanya, you can reliably use Seal and QQ together. You've been able to use them before together, but you have to be a lot more mindful of how you play these two. But now with the release of Hanya and how she generates skill points to the team, you're going to find that these two and the rotations you use with these two characters a lot more comfortable than it once was. And now considering Hanya is a 4 star, what if there is a 5 star version of Hanya that gives more skill points than Hanya does provide to the team? Then once we do receive that character, just like Sora Wolf and Bronya, that character will also fundamentally change the way you play the game because the skill point mechanic or management in this game is something that no other character is able to bypass. That would be extremely broken. Now the most we have is the game giving you ways of actually saving or conserving skill points and Bronya Eidolon 1 is one of the best ways of saving skill points. She is able to recover a skill point with a 50% chance. Now it isn't as reliable as QQ's Eidolon 6 but still, this is a nice way of getting that extra skill point. And then we have a light cone that is able to provide a skill point to the team after using your ultimate. Now this is after two times of using your ultimate, but still being able to provide a skill point is something that is very rare. So this bypasses the rules of the skill point management in Honkai Star Rail. Now what if with the release of Hanya, you're able to use two brilliant light cones on both your Ting Yun and your Hanya, and then your Huo Huo will be able to provide energy to the team but even though she is a skill point neutral character, you can still use any damage dealer in this team party and get value. But you would have more skill points than you actually need because you already will have a skill point generator, that being Hanya. You have Ting Yun, who is a skill point positive character, and then you have Huo Huo, who is skill point neutral. So it's not like she eats up any of the team's skill points. And then you have two Bronya Light Cones, which provides skill points every time you use the ultimate two times. And since Huo Huo provides energy, you're going to get those skill points much more often. So that leads me to believe that skill point management is something that is going to change in the near future. We've already pretty much reached that point, 
but it is a little bit pay to win as of right now with the brawn your light cone that is now lastly i know what you also might be thinking a character that is able to provide energy is also pretty valuable don't get me wrong and since we don't have very many characters that is able to provide energy that makes them all the more valuable but energy is something you gain from actually just using your attacks so it's not like a character like Ting Yun is as strong as Bronya. Don't get me wrong, Ting Yun is amazing, but Ting Yun doesn't fundamentally change the way you play the game. She just speeds things up a little bit. Whereas Bronya gives you a full turn, and Silver Wolf is able to brute force comps that you weren't able to bring before. So Ting Yun doesn't really compete with those two in that category, but she still is an amazing character. And I think any character that is a battery for another character is really, really strong. Whereas Hanya is giving a skill point to the team. So that means you're able to change up how you design your team comps just like you would do with Silver Wolf because of the mechanic she brings or the new mechanic or the bypass of the rules of the skill point management in Hawkeye Star Rail. So there you have it. Now, as I edit the video, I hopefully I didn't make it too much of a wordy salad because I was just trying to explain something that most of you probably already know exactly how I'm trying to explain it. But I just don't want to, you know, get my video taken down or my channel deleted. Because as you all know, there's some things you cannot talk about when it comes to Honkai Star Rail. The same thing can be applied for Genshin Impact, but especially Honkai Star Rail. That's going to be the video here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, thank you all for the support you've been showing as of recently. I really do appreciate it. It makes me continue making these videos. I don't know why I said it like that. That's not proper English, Toshi. I mean, I pronounce all of the characters' names wrong in Honkai Star Rail, even though they're not English names. That's it. Anyways, I'll see you all in the next video. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.